very much, Ray. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. I thank you for taking the time out of your day. We uh, know how busy everyone is and appreciate you taking the time to uh, listen to our presentation going over an overview of traffic and policy management today. Um, if you want to take a look um, you know, deeper into your network, it's gotten very important to do more than just shallow packet inspection. And DPI is something that, some, that many people started to ask about and talk to GenBand about. And we really look at deep packet inspection as just really one piece of the traffic and policy management uh, solution. Um, what is DPI exactly and what is traffic and policy management? Well, DPI is looking deeper inside those packets. In, in the past, a lot of people talked about shallow packet inspection, which was really just looking at the header of the packets and seeing where things were going to. Um, in this case now, we're looking deeper into the packet and doing more than just understanding where things are going to and from and starting to under, understand what's happening at the protocol level or more importantly at the application level and understanding what actually um, people are doing on your network and how they're using the bandwidth. Um, as far as the market goes, we're seeing strong growth and strong requests uh, for information from customers. Um, and, and the market overall is seeing this as well. We know more and more people are actually out there wanting to get more intelligence on their network. And, you know, the network is the business at the end of the day for all of us. And it's very important now that people understand what's happening as more and more applications and real-time media applications are driving growth and bandwidth requirements on the network. Um, you know, really, you know, you'll hear GenBand talk a lot about traffic and policy management. Our P-Series product line um, is our traffic and product management, our, our policy management uh, product line. But DPI is something that many people are already familiar with, and that's just one piece of the solution. So when you hear people talk about deep packet inspection, GenBand provides that solution as part of our traffic and policy management solution. So a quick review of the technology. Um, deep packet inspection is something that's actually been around for some time. Uh, many people in the, uh, in the rural carrier market um, are really just now starting to look and, and try to understand what's happening deeper inside their network. They understand that the data growth has really happened um, quickly for them, and it's really based on many different things. Um, it's everything from applications to more devices to just general general consumer changes in how they use things. That's why it's gotten more important every day to go deeper inside that packet and go at the application level and see if there's a video application that's chewing up bandwidth on the network, or maybe security concern that you may have in your network that you need to look at. And the only way to really understand that on your network is to go deep inside the packets and see exactly what's in that payload um, and understand what's in that application signature. Um, application signatures are very important because they allow the deep packet inspection or traffic and policy uh, management solution to actually see what is happening on your network in real time. By understanding what the, what the signatures of different uh, applications are, you can actually see in real time that someone's using BitTorrent and actually downloading an illegal file or maybe has a malware application running on their machine that may be chewing up bandwidth on, uh, on their DSL connection or on their wireless connection. So deep packet inspection allows you to go deeper inside those packets, down all the way into the payload and footer, and do more than just look at the header of the packet and see where it's going to. So why is this important? Well, I think we all know, you know, you look around today when you walk down the street, you'll see people with their iPhones or you sit down in the coffee shop and you see people with their iPads. Um, and, you know, just the other day, Apple had a big announcement where uh, they have 54 million Mac devices out there now and 73% of them are laptops. That's very important to point out because people are getting more mobile and they're using more and more uh, rich media applications while they do it. Um, the consumers and business users alike are having this happen. Um, if you really look at how people use their mobile phones, um, it's not necessarily just over a 3G connection uh, these days. Many people are using Wi-Fi and driving uh, bandwidth to uh, the, the DSL and high-speed bandwidth connections that may come from your networks. Um, at the same time, as more and more devices get put on that network, as smartphone usage grows, it's very easy for anyone to pick up a phone at any time or pick up an iPad at any time or any tablet device and actually start to access Netflix or YouTube or Skype or whatever it may be. Um, this changes the way and the bandwidth growth that we see in the way that bandwidth is used because people are using more real-time applications and they're using them at their leisure more so than having to be sitting down at a specific location like a desk in their home. Um, this is something that we all knew was coming. It's something we've all talked about. But sometimes I think we all um, kind of step back and haven't really looked at um, the overall changes that's causing and how we manage our networks and what we need to understand about our networks. Um, this can cause congestion problems. This can cause um, really major changes in the way we look at how we handle that quality of experience for our customers. 
for years and years, we focused on making sure those phone calls go through and that when people pick up that phone, they get dial tone. Um, the things have changed. Now people spend much more time on the Internet and using the data side of their connection, while we still, in many cases, treat it as a best effort device. We've spent many years in this market focused on making sure that we understand all the different uh, roles and minutes and, and how many minutes people are dialing and making sure that dial tone is there. But right now, people are starting to use their data connection as even a more priority, prioritized device over their phones because they're using real-time applications on it, because they're doing things that are mission critical to them, just like they've always looked at their phone. And as an industry, we need to start looking at this and make sure that we provide our customers with the same level and quality of experience that we have on the phone side, on the data side, because it's just as important to them now. So what's causing this? Um, once again, you know, if you look at the devices today, a lot of people kind of in the, in the wireline side will blow off a lot of this growth on the data side because they say it's happening in the mobile market. All the, all the data out there and a lot of the information you hear in the market is all about the mobile data growth. Things like AT&T have an 8,000% uh, data growth over four years. A lot of people will blow that off, but, but it also has a major impact on the wireline carriers as well. Um, if you look at a coffee shop or a hot lunch spot or wherever it may be, even in a rural area, uh, people are using Wi-Fi to access the Internet from their mobile phone or from their iPad or from their Motorola Zoom, whatever it may be. And this drives more bandwidth onto the wireline networks in the day and the high-speed connections. Um, so just a few stats here to, to let you know really what's happening. Um, you know, many people don't really understand how Facebook and Skype and Netflix and those impact their network. But, you know, with Facebook having 600 million users, that's a constant flow of traffic and, and people that are accessing media-rich applications. But if Facebook is the second largest just general video usage site on the web only behind YouTube when it comes to small videos and, and social videos. So Facebook drives a large amount of video traffic across your network. Why is that important? Because the average user spends 55 minutes per day on Facebook. A lot of people like to blow off Facebook and say, well, you know, it's a waste of time. Well, as carriers that are carrying that traffic, we can't really look at it like that. You know, one way I like to, like to look at it is, for many years, people said TV was a waste of time. Um, well, Facebook's not going anywhere. It's going to continue to drive more traffic on the network. And you got to think about as more social applications come out and more and more people watch a video across sites like Facebook, it's going to cause an impact on bandwidth usage on the network. Um, just an, another example here is over the New Year's weekend alone, there were 750 million images that were uploaded to Facebook. That's happening everywhere, whether it be in the rural market, whether it be in the large markets, whether it be mobile phones. That's increased bandwidth during those times like that that's hitting the network. And you need to understand a deeper, you need to have a deeper understanding of how that bandwidth, how that usage is impacting your network. Um, Netflix. Um, there's many, many people out there that use Netflix now and it's growing every day. Over, almost 30% of North American inter internet traffic during prime time is Netflix now. This is important to note because, you know, as we look at it, and I, I mentioned that we all like to pay a lot of attention to making sure our phone calls go through, which is very, very, very important. But at the same time, people are starting to look at Netflix and, and, and these type of things as real-time applications they expect access to. And when it doesn't work, people are getting phone calls. Um, you know, one of the things that I hear from customers, and it's a pretty common theme, is, you know, I get customer complaints during prime time that I only get 200K throughput, but I bought a 5 meg connection. Um, in many cases, it's almost impossible for that carrier to go back and look at those specific customers and to understand what exact bandwidth applications they were looking and why exactly that customer was getting that level of congestion. Um, with deep pack inspection or actually with traffic and policy management and the P-Series product line from GenBand, we can actually look real time and understand what a specific subscriber is using. Um, we can start to see, are they using Netflix? Is Netflix the problem? Or maybe they actually have a, a malware infection or some sort of security threat in their computer that's eating up a good chunk of their bandwidth. Maybe it's actually not the, the service provider's problem, but it's more of a problem on the customer's uh, computer that's causing the bandwidth issues in the computer. And it's, it's gotten more and more important for us to understand on a real-time basis what actually people are doing with their connection so we can troubleshoot it and so we can manage our networks effectively. Um, also, real-time, once again, real-time entertainment being so key, just like the TV should always work, just like the phone should always work, that interconnection has to, internet connection has to always work because almost 50% of all internet traffic is real-time now. And that's, once again, something that people see. If it's an email, if it's something like that, people don't necessarily notice if something doesn't work real-time. But when they're watching Netflix at night 
and they want to watch the latest episode of The Office and it doesn't work, well, they're going to notice that because that, that stream is not coming into them and that's something real time they're trying to watch and, and they're going to notice that that's not working properly for them. Uh, another the large one that we've heard a lot about lately is Skype. Um, 207 billion minutes last year alone. Um, sure, that's a lot of three minutes between between uh, uh, peer-to-peer clients, but at the end of the day, if Microsoft is, is betting $8.5 billion that they, they can drive something out of Skype, that tells me Skype's only going to keep growing, and that's going to drive more and more traffic. And understanding how your users are actually using that network by going deeper into that network and understanding um, what applications are using on a day-to-day basis is very important because now you need to understand what is driving that congestion on your network on a day-to-day basis. So what challenges are you having? Congestion, we know. We hear it from customers on a day-to-day basis. The more that there's a surge in peer-to-peer applications and real-time video applications, the more we hear about the quality of experience, which is something we have to all be concerned about, but that quality of experience is dropping for many customers because of the congestion on the network. Um, And to be able to allow you to manage that properly, it's very important that you look deeper and, and understand what's actually causing that congestion. Doing more than just seeing how much bandwidth overall is going through a connection, but actually understanding what applications are causing the problem. Is it a security threat? Is it a new application? Is it video? What's causing these problems with these congestion points and how to improve that quality of experience so you can actually lessen customer churn so they don't just pick up their mobile phone and start accessing that same thing and then continue to churn off the network. Vulnerability on the network. As more and more smart devices access that network, there's a higher chance that will be some sort of security threat on that network. Being able to recognize that up front and being able to act on it real time and block something like that has gotten very important. You know, very large networks these days are being hit with things like this. And, and, you know, whether it be small networks or large networks, the same threat's there as more intelligent devices come on. If you look at the Sony PlayStation 3 outage here this here uh, several weeks back, you know, Sony being a large company had were putting more and more intelligent devices on the network. That intelligent device happened via Sony PlayStation 3. And what did that cause? People were able to use that intelligent device to actually get access to the network and cause issues for them and shut them down for several weeks. That type of vulnerability is there for everyone as far as, uh, as, as more and more intelligent devices come on. Cost control is very key here. It's very easy, you know, maybe not from a cost standpoint, but overall from an engineering standpoint, to continue to show that if I add more circuits, I have more bandwidth. But is that always the best way? By having more intelligence on your business, which is actually your network, um, is, it's actually becomes much easier to reduce cost and reduce those circuits that you continue to have to add because of increased bandwidth usage by doing shaping and being able to understand maybe what traffic can be blocked because of security threats, you can actually start to control the cost on your network and maybe decrease the number of uh, upstream circuits that you're having to add. The next few all kind of go together to me. Limited service differentiation, stuck in the flat rate business model. That is one problem we as an industry have. And one of the problems is we don't understand what our customers are actually doing. We know that overall, from a voice and data standpoint, we've been stuck in a flat rate business model. But, you know, I talk to customers and the usage share is a flat rate. And we know this. I talked to a customer just recently here in Missouri who had their traffic grow over 14 months by over 100% on their data stream or in their upstream data connections. That's a lot of growth. Their their prices are still the same to their customers. But if you look at Netflix, Netflix and Facebook and YouTube and the growth they're all having, it means that those flat rate business models are, we're going to have to find new ways to increase revenue out of that same connection. So what service providers need to solve this problem? We need to understand what, what devices are accessing the network. Are they accessing from iPads? Are they accessing from iPhones? Is it from their laptop? Is it from the coffee shop? You know, whatever it may be, we need to know where they're located, what they're accessing it on, and actually understand how they use it on those different devices so we can actually start to offer revenue-generating applications that actually match what the customers want. And that's one big difference here, is you can actually see how they use your network and start to provide them services that actually match their exact usage instead of hoping you got the marketing right. You need to understand the applications. Um, what is driving the growth? What is driving the bandwidth growth on my network? Is it Netflix? Is it YouTube? Is it something new that came out? Every month there's some new application on the social side that, that goes viral and drives a bunch of bandwidth usage. It's happening every month these days. You need to be able to understand what applications are actually eating up the bandwidth on your network and how you're
hundred users are using them, and then be able to report on them and actually understand that long term and see, you know, do I have a? What, I just had my bandwidth grow ten percent over three months. Where was that growth at? And be able to run reports and statistics to see where that growth was coming from. If you're going to manage, the, uh, sorry, to manage it effectively. So control, understanding all the statistics and everything is very important. But at some point, you need to start to do something with that information. And things like controlling real-time traffic to make sure that quality of experience for the users is good, right? Making sure that you can control the traffic and make sure that certain users are getting their fair share. You know, if you have bronze, silver, and gold packages, making sure that that gold package actually gets the priority that, that actually it, it deserves it for the various services they may be purchasing. So making sure that the service provider has knowledge of the users and how they use the network, the applications, and then being able to do something with that information is getting more important every day. You know, and, and that, you know, on the, on the question number one, though, that, that's something that we're seeing a lot where some people are actually starting to understand that um, they need to start looking into the network, and they may have already started evaluating devices or maybe started to um, attempt either start to evaluate devices or actually already put them in their network and are trying to understand what's happening in their network, but they've not tried to really use that information to create new revenue streams yet. And that's one of the things we're seeing a lot in the market. So that, that the percentage there makes, makes some sense. Okay, so what does TPM do for service providers? Um, you know, one of the things I say a lot, I, I think we as an industry forget sometimes because it gets very easy to manage by the numbers but not really understand, uh, and manage by the spreadsheet, but not actually understand that the network is actually the business. You know, the business that we are in is running a network and then getting the most from that network. And TPM actually allows you to get true business intelligence from that network. Um, and that analysis goes all the way down to the user and applications and bit level uh, information that you're trying to find and act on in your network and be able to use it the most effectively. And I think one of the things that, you know, I find most interesting here, and I think our customers were, were hearing a lot too, is the fact that you can start to create services that are actually based on real information about what your customers are doing. You know, find out what type of services they're, they're, they're interested in and either offer bandwidth packages that match that or maybe, um, maybe be able to create a package or a service that actually competes with it. You know, maybe you start to see that video on demand is hot and you offer video on demand services yourself. Why don't you go out and create a service based on the information that your customers are obviously interested in that? So traffic management is the next thing. Uh, once again, there's lots of information out there that you can gather and statistics on your network from, from doing the inspection of the, of the network. But unless you start to use that information, it's really just a bunch of data. And I think many, in many cases, this is what happens. People spend a lot of time analyzing, and they should, what's happening on the network. But once you start to understand how that network's being used and where the congestion points are and where the problem points are, it's very important that you start to manage that traffic, whether it be through filtering traffic that should not be on the network, whether it be through shaping traffic to make sure real-time traffic gets priority and maybe lesser traffic um, it does not get higher priority. Um, all those things need to start to happen. Um, one of the important things about the P-Service product is, is it obviously interfaces directly with policy and, and charging solutions to make sure that you can build properly and actually create the proper policies on the network to actually effectively create the services you want. Service creation um, is the next one, and this is one that um, I know in many cases service providers get concerned about when they hear service creation because they automatically expect that there's going to be a bunch of development that's required to create these new services because in many cases over the years they've heard service creation and, and there's a whole development team or application that has to be built to do something. Well, with the P-Series product line by GenBand, you know, although we have uh, very extensive APIs that can be integrated into the system through, through third-party applications, um, we also have very simple scripting engines. But if you have someone available on staff that can do uh, simple scripting through Python or something like that, you can create revenue generating applications and actually network management and intelligence applications through a simple scripting engine that's built right into the system so you don't have to have a complete programming team necessarily to create new services. Um, an example service that can be created um, is someone that may be offering um, uh, high-speed you know, high bandwidth services and the subscriber is currently, currently subscribing to a flat rate plan, which is pretty common right now. We all know that. People are trying to figure out how to get more revenue from a DSL connection and, you know, how am I going to get my subscribers to pay more money? You know, so it may be that you actually set up a usage cap 
um, which is something that, that, that we're seeing more and more, and you know, we've heard more and more about, is that there's a usage cap. Let's say you sell somebody a five meg connection, but they only get one gig of, of usage per month as far as downloads. Um, in some months, they may exceed that. So with the TPM system in place, you can actually automatically redirect them when they hit their limit to a portal that actually allows them to decide, do I want to top up my usage? Do I want to pay for another 500 mega service? Do I want to include IPTV with what I'm doing? You know, upsell them. You may be able to upsell them when they start to reach their peak. Um, another one, another application here that we can talk about that, that we hear people interested in is, you know, we have people that have five meg download service, but uh, during prime time, they're starting to use more and more real-time media, and they'd actually really prefer to have 10 meg service, but they just don't want to pay that per month. So customers that may be interested in being redirected or go to a customer portal and say, you know what, for $10 more a month, I will pay for 10 meg download during prime time because I'm using more real-time service. And being able to go to the site real-time and be able to click yes on turning up more bandwidth so it decreases their congestion is something that many people would be interested in because they're using higher speed applications in the evenings. So uh, one of the questions, we'll, we'll be answering questions here at the end. I do see a question came in, which is what are the legal impacts of using DPI for blocking sites and services? And we'll, we're going to keep these questions and then we'll be answering when we're doing these towards, towards the end of the presentation. So P-Series solution elements, the GenBan uh, P-Series uh, is GenBan's traffic and policy management solution. And what we have um, in the system is everything from the subscriber manager, which is the P PSM, which is, allows you to integrate and get information from your subscriber management systems, whether it's your billing systems, your operational systems, or it could actually snoop data straight from a DHCP or ADS uh, request and be able to associate that data with subscriber information automatically, meaning you can, you can grab radius data and know this IP address goes to this user automatically and then even understand what device types they're coming in on. And what that does then is it integrates down to our intelligence center, the PM2 and PM10, and also down to our real-time engines, our real-time enforcement engines, which is our P1, P2, P10, and P20 and P80, which allows it to automatically um, recognize what subscriber is going with what traffic. And be able to look at statistics in real time and understanding what users are actually using what devices and analyze the applications that they're using on a real time basis. Um, the statistics server, like I mentioned, is our PM2 and PM10, which allows long term reports and statistics and analysis of the data com coming through the system. The PRE, or the P uh, real time enforcement engine, um, actually is the, the device that sits in line in the network or on a mirrored basis, and actually the traffic flows through. It classifies traffic, it will manage the traffic, and it's actually the device that actually handles the shaping or the enforcement of the policies that are actually being sent to it. And overall with all that, we also have our professional services team that we understand, you know, in many cases, uh, customers may not have the resources on staff to go out and handle the integration and um, really installation of these devices because it's new devices in their network, or they want to have a good plan in place to use this long term, and our professional services team can come out with you on site and actually do long term planning to make sure that your network is, is being managed in the most effective way. So our P-Series products, just a little bit more about them. Uh, we have devices that scale small, uh, you know, to small networks, enterprise networks, up to very large networks. Um, in many cases, in the rural market, we're seeing a lot of P2 and P10 interest, but we've had customers purchase all up to the P, all the way up to the P80 and the P20. Um, it, you know, without going through all the, the details on each one of these devices, um, something like the P1, which could be put into an enterprise, handles up to 100 mega throughput on the device. The P80 handles all the way up to 80 gig, or actually uh, 120 gig with, with the updated device. So we have very large and very small scaling solutions to make sure they fit every network. So deployment models. Um, one of the questions we get that, that sometimes can be challenging without having a lot of information on the, on the customer network, but customers start to evaluate and look at a little harder once they understand what the possibilities are is, where does this go in my network? Um, it really can go pretty much anywhere depending on your needs. Um, if you're putting it on the access, you're going to get distributed management of the subscribers connecting our uh, subscriber manager back with the PRE or the, the P1s and P2s. 
Um, what this allows you to do is really watch as soon as that data comes on the network from the customer and make sure and understand, is it a security threat? Is something illegal? Uh, or shape that traffic before it even gets deeper into the network. Um, so putting on the edge, there's various different things you can do with that. Um, but, you know, many cases people are putting it also towards the core. So they can aggregate all their subscribers and look at all the different subscriber management in one location without deploying the devices throughout all the different points of the network. So once again, um, on a case-by-case basis, as we evaluate customer networks, we're planning different needs. And we've learned that, you know, really there's, there's various cases and needs to have this put any place in the network. Just understanding the customer network and evaluating that with that would be very valuable. Now we're going to talk a little bit about traffic shaping, which we've mentioned through here. Traffic shaping allows you to optimize and guarantee performance across the network, which can be very important as you're doing congestion management. Um, what you can do is decide what objects need to be shaped, um, and then provide, whether it be prioritization or throttling or rate limits for that traffic to make sure, um, to make sure the right traffic gets through and make sure mission critical, mission critical traffic makes it through the network and something like file sharing or something like that, maybe um, when there's a bandwidth concern, doesn't have as high a priority as something that is a mission critical application. So you can start to guarantee quality of service and improve latency and congestion problems by actually starting to do traffic shaping and putting the right traffic in the right buckets and start to fit it through properly. So prioritization through shaping, the number of, so one of the things about the system is the number of queues and the behavior in the system is configurable through all the different rule sets and shaping objects. We're able to create many, many different shaping objects, such as VoIP, in this case, video streaming, business applications, and then put them in different queues, and then put them into, we look at it like a funnel, and then set different rate limits, meaning uh, you might be able to put VoIP traffic at 5 meg across the network, but then limit email traffic to 1 meg across the network, just for, just for numbers for use here. And then be able to shape that traffic and prioritize it properly as far as what traffic gets dropped first, and be able to properly look at the statistics on this and start to understand and limit the congestion on the network. Uh, the priority values will decide what, when, what order these packets will be transmitted. In other words, the queuing and the transmission on the network will actually be based on, on different queuing mechanisms that we have based on numbering systems and, and understanding what's high priority and what's low. So traffic filtering. And this is one that um, is, uh, there's a few different use cases for this. Um, one case uh, is the ability to do a parental control system. Um, in many cases, people may be interested in offering a parental control system so they know when their when their 10-year-old is actually on their laptop at home and they're using the system, they can actually block specific sites from that 10-year-old's access. So if you want to be able to block a gaming site from, from your 10-year-old's site um, and your laptop, then you can actually filter specific URLs on a per-user basis, which can be very important if you're wanting to offer a parental control system and give parents that peace of mind uh, as, their, as their kids are browsing the web. But then you can also accept all the other traffic instead of filtering rules that allow you to pass traffic but have a specific set of sites that, that can be blocked. Um, another thing that this is getting very, very uh, a whole lot of use and interest from is BitTorrent. Um, from what I understand from speaking to customers, and it's actually been pretty consistent from, from east to west, has been the stacks of DMCA notices that are coming in uh, to take down is actually growing on a month-by-month -month basis. And I, I hear that more and more they're, they're pushing harder and harder for, for more files to be taken down. Um, one of the things that can be done here, since that is an illegal case, which means it has to be managed and, and you're responsible for, for this, um, is actually you can proactively enact real-time on redirecting, redirecting a BitTorrent request and actually understand what URL is illegal and should not be accessed and then redirect that to a DMCA notice site to let people know that this file is no longer available or it's, or it's an illegal download and you, you basically can't do this. So that's another sort of traffic filtering and URL filtering that you can do. Okay, so what are some of the solutions we've been talking about here? And, and you know, this is really um, there's some pretty uh, common applications here are things like business, Intelligence. You know, once again, I'm going to say it again, the network is the business. Um, and being able to under, understand what the statistics are and really what the applications are that your customers are using, and then being able to build the proper services around that, either from a usage standpoint, you know, topping off uh, bandwidth services uh, during prime time. Uh, things like that are actually running statistics and being able to see what points in your network uh, the congestion is growing in, 
and then be able to understand what applications are actually causing that has become more and more important when it comes to running the network. Because why? Because once again, that internet connection, whether we as an industry um, are, are keeping up with it or not, has become more than just best effort to many people, and has become as important, if not more important for many people than that phone connection that, that we continue to make sure um, has that highest quality of experience. And we need to start focusing on, as a business uh, as a business and industry, making sure that quality of experience is there for uh, the Internet side as well. Something we just talked about was the redirect filtering and blocking solutions. Being able to look at BitTorrent and understand what files, and pe files people are accessing real time has become more important as more and more of those DMCA requests and takedown requests have came out. So being able to do filtering and blocking like that um, is something very important to service providers as, as it's taken more and more resources to manage this. Um, at the same time, revenue generating applications can come through that as people start to offer um, either security services, blocking malware autom automatically when it's coming out of the computer, or security threats, or start to offer, offer um, parental control solutions. A few other things here that are not as common but, but becoming more common or something people are starting to look at is something like caching. And being able to understand the traffic and where that traffic's coming from and being able to automatically interface with a caching engine through an API to, to make sure you're caching the proper content and make sure that, that you understand what content better be cached uh, just due to increased usage on the network. We can really increase that quality of experience for those customers and decrease that customer churn. Uh, the next thing, and this is really one that, that I'll say is out of the box and, and I like to talk to customers a lot about, it's something that... You know, many customers may not use, but it gives you the indication of what's possible if you step back a little bit and start thinking out of the box and try to think of new ways to generate revenue. And that is application and device-based ad insertion. What this means is you stick an advertising server or, or an ad server next to the P-Series device and use the API to automatically inject advertising. Um, many people get scared when they hear that. But what I'd like to point out is companies like Google and Facebook are some of the most powerful companies in technology today, and their revenue all comes from advertising. More importantly, it comes from intelligent advertising. Um, what that means is Google makes their money because they're very good at targeting the advertising on their search engine and their partner sites on what exactly you're looking for at what time. Uh, the same thing happens for Facebook. They're very good at targeting their pay-per-click ads all around their site based on what the interest of the users are. Well, if you start to look at new ways to increase revenue, and customers are more and more familiar with seeing these ads out there and more comfortable with it, if you had an opt-in service, and, and once again, I'll make it clear when I say opt-in there, it might be possible for you to start to go deeper into those packets and understand how your customers are using the network and offer targeted advertising solutions. Um, one thing I'd like to point out here is, you know, in, these, in the rural telco market specifically, um, those customers are very familiar with you. And you know those small businesses, and you actually know... Um, the consumers very well, and they are tied to you more so than, than in many other markets. And they actually um, probably give you more information without you realizing it than Google and Facebook and any of the others will ever get because it's such a localized market. Local advertising is the fastest growing, um, you know, because of the mobile devices, the fastest growing um, uh, pay-per-click advertising for Google and, and many of the others. So being able to have that information on local users and being able to provide the proper targeted advertising um, actually could be a revenue generator. Is that something that everyone's going to do? Probably not, but it, it should get you thinking a little bit about TPM as different than just statistics. You know, and that's one of the things we, we've seen as many people think about it is just statistics. Um, but you start to look at the intelligence and what it gives you, and you can find new revenue generating applications. So now we're going to go through a few example deployments. Um, so one was a regional broadband car carrier that specifically wanted intelligence of its traffic. Much like I said, many people are not necessarily doing the shaping and some of the other things right now, but they know they have to, but they're wanting to prepare for this. So this is someone that had um, an IPTV system in place. They wanted to start getting more intelligence on the traffic so they could properly manage their network. So they wanted to get real-time historical views of the flows and start to understand what their customers were doing. Um, in the future, they want to start doing the traffic shaping. They want to start doing filtering and then start to come up with new service packages using the service creation environment that we have in the P-Series product. They actually selected, uh, in this case, a P80. You know, this was a regional carrier, and they selected the P80, which is the 80 gig box, as well as the P20, which is the 20 gig box. So they were able to offer this on an ATCA platform, um, uh, so on, on standard hardware, um, to deploy quickly into their network. Another example. 
example is the is the MSO cable provider. So if, if you have a cable plant in place, which, which I know many do, um, they actually wanted to start to use um, the system by using the subscriber manager as well as the uh, the PM2 and PM10 uh, type devices, which is the PICs. Um, they wanted in-depth intelligence on that network. They wanted to see, and this is something I mentioned earlier, was the penetration of competitive services. You know, if Skype's doing 207 billion minutes a year, and Netflix is doing the percentage of traffic they do, it starts to become very important to understand what those customers are doing, and is there the chance to start to offer competing services? Um, not prioritize your traffic over them, because that's when you start to, to have to look at things legally, but start to understand what your customers are actually using, and then determine, is there something, a business model there that you can start to offer something to your own customers? They're obviously using it. Um, they wanted to be able to look at traffic by subscriber ID, rather than just IP address, which is why they put in the subscriber manager because it can look at radius packets and actually it can look at radius packets and actually uh, associate user IDs to IP addresses, which indeed you can look at you can start to look at the applications on a per user basis. So example three was a WiMAX carrier, which you know we're starting to hear a lot about as, as many companies that got the real broadband stimulus decided to deploy wireless broadband to rural areas as, as many people know. Um, this customer wanted to get um, network and application usage on a per pop basis. So they wanted to understand what different regional areas were actually using which applications. Um, they planned to offer uh, residential services uh, as far as gold, silver, and bronze, but also business services, and wanted to be able to uh, and offer them really packages that offered them a higher level of quality of service and protection on the network compared to what the residential services may get. And they wanted to be able to do traffic management on the backhaul links which is very important as they have, you know, as you go into these rural areas, as we all know, it may be tough to get bandwidth into these wireless locations, with, which were hard to get into in the first place. So why the P-Series? Um, extensive, extensive signatures. This is something that, you know, I really can't say enough about. As we talk more and more about applications, it becomes more apparent every day that there's new applications that are coming on the market that you need to be able to act to understand and be able to recognize accurately. So being able to have a high number of application signatures automatically in the device, which, which updates automatically every two weeks in our case, is very important. We actually have over 2,000 signatures of different applications that we update on a biweekly basis to make sure that your network is up to date and being able to recognize this traffic in, in, in a quick manner. Whether it be security threats or video applications, it's important to be able to not have to manually go out and track that application and be able to do it automatically. Being able to have flow and queue sync on the network so you can manage asymmetric traffic allows consistent traffic management. It means that if, you know, if there's asymmetric flows of traffic coming into your network, it doesn't have to, it, it, you're not going to be able to mismanage that traffic. You're going to be able to manage that traffic properly because the, actually the queues and the flows are synced between the different P-series devices so it can recognize traffic coming through multiple devices. BGP awareness. Um, if you have your P-Series device next to your upstream provider, we can actually um, manage and policies and statistics based on which autonomous system or which BGP peer that you actually are, are connecting to and be able to recognize what traffic's coming from there, what that traffic's doing, what applications are coming from there, and be able to make sure that traffic's being managed properly and effectively going back to them. Volume-based shaping we talked about. The GenBand the P series offers volume based shaping, so you can actually do subscriber and quota management and usage based policies. This is what gets you out of that flat, flat rate building model. Being able to start to look at new revenue generating applications and, and services that customers actually want, and be able to base your policies and, and billing on the actual customer needs is going to get more important as we go forward. We are actually real time, and this is something that, that we may not hit on enough, but I think is very important to point out. You know, if a customer's calling in with a bandwidth problem, it can be very valuable to real time look at what that subscriber's doing in real time. And, and with the GenBand P series, we can actually look real time live at that traffic and see if they're using Netflix. See on the, on the upstream connection what's happening. Why are they having that congestion? What traffic is causing this? Or is there a security threat right now in real time instead of having to go back and look uh, many days later at, at that traffic and then try to understand it? And capacity, we scale down and we scale up um, in, in a manner that actually we can fit into any network effectively. So why traffic and policy management? 
because you need to understand that network. That network is your business, and it's, it's getting harder and harder to live in that flat rate model. So be able to understand truly what devices are being used, what users are doing, and what applications they're doing allows you to do better business management of that network and start to create new services. Because service creation is key now. Um, customers expect services. They expect a better quality of experience. And by that quality of experience can actually be managed by offering the proper services and bandwidth and tools that they need. And then finding more monetization options beyond the pipe. Um, you know, one of the things that I said, kind of the out-of-the-box advertising solution is one thing I mentioned, but there's many others. But by being able to look at that pipe differently and find new ways to create revenue out of it, whether it be ads, whether it be data aggregation, it has become very important. And one thing that we can't go without mentioning here is training, documentation. Many people hear this and they think, okay, I understand this, that, that, that we need to do this, but they're concerned about once they have it, what are they going to do? Jim Van has a complete training and documentation program that make it very easy to get going with the system to make sure that you can come into it, look at it, understand it, and start to, start to run with the different services and management statistics plans that we have on it. Yes, we do, actually. Um, if you look at um, one of the questions here is, uh, do we have the ability to offer demos and trials? And the answer is yes. Um, we have actually been working with our customers quite frequently lately, trying to put a trial plan in place for them that matches their needs, and we've actually been successful in doing that. And uh, we have many customers in trials right now that, that are starting up and, and have been in place for some time. And uh, I answered Basil here as well, and I, I'll answer that loud. And yes, we actually can monitor heavy users and actually uh, on a per-user basis or on a on a group of IP basis and pick users out and automatically act on the usage um, that they've had. You know, are they downloading a lot, a lot of data over a one-week period? Are they doing it over what uh, time period they have? Um, yes, we can act on that in real time and send them SMS messages, emails, or redirect them to portals to allow them to top up their services, um, which in turn means that you can start to increase revenue on, on a per-user basis. I should mention on the trial on the trial and demos that, that Jeff asked here, if you do have a request for a trial or demo or want to try this out or actually have someone set on site with you and actually go through a demo of the system, um, contact your GenBand salesperson and, and we'll be happy to set that up and uh, either come on site or do it remotely and be able to show you through the, 